Stewart Media and Entertainment presents the Two Live Stews Experience. We back, show. This right here, this ain't your ordinary ish. Two Live Stews Experience, Ryan Stewart, Doug Stewart, baby, we back. Ooh, yes, we are back. <laughs> it's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you, but them folks sat us down forcefully. Are you, are you, are you? What up to the cues? Do not let anyone confuse you. The Two Live Stews started this shit. Eh? The Two Live Stews experience, shouty. If you're not stewing, what the hell are you doing? What up, though? What's up, man? How you doing, man? What up, though? That's that Detroit language that uh, that you've uh, accumulated, huh? Before we get started, man, I'm just happy mm-hmm. to see you. You know, the last time we did this, we dealt with some trials and tribulations, but we came through in and, flying and then, fashion. And, 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 and we we may still have some trials and tribulations. Yeah, I man, mean, especially with the equipment you got over at your spot, man. I mean, you have the most antiquated, outdated, non- I mean, I couldn't think of another big word to say. Hey, hey, shots out to everybody in the chat room. Um, shots out to Southern Edge, southernedgevodka.com, sweet tea flavored vodka, salted caramel flavored whiskey. Listen, right. you, you, you jumping on me about my computer. What does your t shirt say, man? Monk's Corner, South Carolina. It's where my story begins. So, isn't it a beautiful shirt, man? This is a hometown shirt, man. Okay, so you missed out, I guess. You missed this. We got a chat group. We got a chat group for a, a bunch of people from back in the crib, right? Okay. And oh, I no, post- no, no, hold on, hold on. Whoa, go ahead, whoa. go ahead, go ahead. What chat group where I am no, I am not a part of a chat no, group. No, you, you're part of it. You're part of it on Facebook. Well, how would I, how would I know? I, I, I'm yeah, the, on the one Cornell and, and Zebra got. Oh, the bullies. And the messenger, the bullies. Oh, the bullies. Right, the okay, bullies. Okay, okay, all right, okay. So I posted in there. Uh, somebody brought it to my attention, and you're watching the two lives too. Somebody brought it to my attention. Shouts out, they, Pastor Cornell. We love you, dog. Yeah, they actually uh, cut and paste and sent me part of the Wikipedia on Monk's Corner. Okay. The top paragraph on, on, on the Wikipedia for Monk's Corner says, Monk's Corner is named after Thomas Monk, a vicious slave owner oh, who stamped damn. T. Monk on all of his slaves' chests. <laughs> I know it's not even funny. I don't even know why I'm laughing. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm laughing. No, so, man. No, no. So once, so listen. Yeah. So listen. This is serious. Yeah, once, it is. once we discovered this, I posted it in the chat group and I said, "Listen, most going to people, I make a motion that from now on, we call MC. I'm not even going to say the name now because of Mr. Monk and what he did to our people. We're going to call where we're from either one or two things: the corner." Or Moco. The young people have been calling it Moco already. They so have been. The so, young the, so, the, been so the younger Moco. generation knew about our Maybe the younger generation we knew and we didn't know. Damn. I mean, that really hurts, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, should I say something about this, man, on the air? No, or man. That, now it's just power, man. I mean, there's a lot of people from us going to probably listen to this, see this, and now they'll know, Moco. man, because I've Moco. never heard that. Moco. If you look it up right now, Moco. You oh, said, that hurts, you said man. Yeah. A vicious slave owner that stamped T. Monk on all of his slaves' chests. Oh, my God. That's what our town is named after, that dude. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me make sure. Let me make sure it's not on mine, man. Nah, it's not on yours, sir. It's not on yours. Ah, Lee, that's sick, man. When I heard that, man. When I read that, it's actually you. You can go and read it. When I read that, I was like, "Well, I be damn." Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, two live stews experience going down on a wonderful, beautiful Wednesday. Should I not say that, man? Are, are, are we dating ourselves? Should I yeah, not do that? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Okay. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't right. do that. All I don't right, know what does good. trees have to say about that tree. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't say dates because you're dating the show, and this thing is going to live in down. She says uh, down. Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, all this right. Show's going to live in forever. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a, it's, up, a, it's, a, it's a different format. So, how was the weekend? Let's get to that. How was the weekend? Great weekend, man. Um, the wife was out of town, so it was just me and the kids, man. And that's always fun, man. You know, uh-huh. I let them do their thing. Uh, I I cook breakfast every morning. We go out every evening for dinner. Uh, for lunch or snacks in between breakfast and dinner, you on your own, 
They video game. Dad watches Young and the Restless, cleans mm -hmm. up and does his thing, man. Mm -hmm. It was a great weekend. Looking for something to do this weekend. I took the kids to see One Love, man. The, the Bob, the Bob Marley, Marley story. How was it? Yeah. Did you see it? No. Hell no. Okay. Hell no. What do you mean hell no? Why are you saying no, hell I, no? I haven't. I don't know. I don't know why I say hell no. I haven't seen it. I want to yeah. see it. Yeah. Shout out to it. Bob Marley, man. Um, the folks at Rotten Tomatoes. You know what? Like I, 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 I'll tell you the problem I got with the movie. And I'm going okay. to see it because I support all black movies. But go ahead. And I'll tell you. Remind me to tell you the reason why I'm kind of uh, scratching my head on this movie. One Go Love ahead. is the latest in a long line of musical biopics in recent years, according to most critics. The 2024 movie doesn't do enough to separate itself from the crowd and falls to justice to Bob Marley's impressive and profound legacy. However, when looking at the audience's thought of the film, their reviews are vastly different. Um, shouts out to the good folks I got that from uh, my sources, the Screen Rant. Uh -huh. Shouts out to Sarah Little for that. Um, I thoroughly loved it. So Rotten uh, Tomatoes gave it 42% rating. That's and the not a good audience rating, is, is it? That's a bad no, for, rating, No, right? 42% is horrible. So yeah, Rotten, Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes are the A movie. bunch of white people talking about black movie. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why it's a, a 42%. Yeah. Um, and that's why I don't, I'm not knocking Tree for, for posting the, the Rotten Tomatoes thoughts, but um, I don't even read their stuff when they cr criticize movies or, or, or tell us their takes on movies. They don't yeah. see things the way we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. sir. What I didn't like was I was thinking it was going to be a a, a movie of his entire life. Uh huh. Which, when you really think about it, he lived thirty six years, passed of cancer. Um, that's too much to put in an hour and a half, two hour film. Right. So, the basis of this movie, do you do you buy his music or listen to his music? Oh yeah, I love Bob Marley. I actually got a Bob Marley T shirt. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. wear it on the show one day. This movie was all about the Exodus album and his recording of the Exodus album. Yeah. yeah. So if you know that album, which the majority of us do, and you like that album, mm -hmm. um, Exodus. you're going to love this movie. Right. That's right. Yeah, man. It, it, it was a, I really enjoyed it, man. Morgan sat beside me in the movie like she always does because she steals my popcorn. Mm -hmm. I really buy it for her. She thinks it's for me, but I let her think she's getting away with stealing the popcorn. It's something that dad does with daughter. Um, but every time they play one of the songs, man, I'm in there standing up singing the songs. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good. I had like three gummies in me too. Look, man. I you really, had three really what? Like, you had three huh? what in you? What? When? You said when? you had three gummies. You, you, you misheard me. You misheard me. I said I really enjoyed the popcorn in Morgan's tummy while we were eating at the okay. movie. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, really good film, man. I recommend you going to see it for sure. Here's the thing, man, and, and you're yeah. watching the two live shoes. I'm on two gummies right now. I got to I got to and this is just my hang up. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge it. Okay. I got a problem when they give a movie of that stature, of that big of a name, to a no name. Like the guy playing Bob Marley. I don't uh, know wait, who the hell that is. Oh, oh this is perfect. We got to talk about this. No, no, I'm serious. And I'm, no offense to the guy, but... I almost feel like a role like Bob Marley, like Tupac. Should be like, played by Ziggy? Or like, should be played by one of Bob Marley's kids? Or okay. should be played by Tupac's kid? That's a great idea. That's a great idea. But what, no. I, mean, what I mean is somebody established. No. Like, don't, don't, don't laugh. And you're going to laugh. I almost feel like Denzel Washington needs to play Bob Marley, man. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like a guy that I've never heard of or seen in a movie – I read an article. He actually played in the Barbie movie this summer, which I didn't okay. see. But I, I, I almost feel either. like that role is too big for a newcomer. Okay, so let's tell talk me, about tell this. Me, tell me what you think. And I want to hear Tree's opinion on this as well. We're going to move on. Yes, it's a newcomer. However, it's a trained thespian, sir. <laughs> a train Everybody thespian. wants Ziggy's kid to play it. I want the other Bob's Marley's other kids. Oh, the Marley's should have been doing this. No, the Marley's are trained actors. The Marley's couldn't do it. If the no, Marley's no. would have done it, Hold on, it may have been more. It would have been. It may have been more Rasta like, more Rastafari like. Absolutely, absolutely. But it wouldn't have been portrayed and sold the way it is now. Trained actors need to be on films for movies for them to make money, man. Okay, I hear what you're saying. And I, I'm not, I and, didn't suggest. And, 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 and look, remember what you're going to say. Right. And 
<laughs> you look like the black Pat McAfee with that take. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to figure, who does this guy look like with this damn black t-shirt on? You know what I'm talking about, right? I do, man. Pat McAfee with ESPN. They, they cut him a check for that little uh, eighty-five million dollar check, player. Five years, eighty-five million. They give him eighty-five million. They can give us fifty. Yeah. They can give us fifty, right? Man, listen, give me two, and you'll never see me again. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm the Marlies. I, I stay after the movie ends to mm-hmm. watch all the credits because sometimes they'll throw another scene in there at, after the credits roll. Right. So while we're sitting there, I'm reading the credits as they're rolling through. The Mollies were all over that movie. They were directors. They right. were producers. They were well, on, the, on the gap on, on the, uh, the, the the technician crew. They were right. gaffers. I mean, right. they did all kind of stuff with the film. So let me let me let me make sure for the record, I didn't. I wasn't thinking one of the Mollies to play the role. I'm just saying somebody established. Shout Malcolm out to Courtney X. Williams. Courtney Mal- Williams said Doug wants Samuel Jackson to play Barack Obama too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Ma- okay. Ma- Malcolm uh, Malcolm X played by Denzel Washington. Ray Charles played by Jamie Foxx. Give me, give me another big movie on a big known superstar that Tree wasn't Sanders played Reed. by. Go ahead, Tree. Hey, Tree. Come on, Tree. Angela Bassett slayed Tina Turner. Right. She did. She Angela did. Bassett, Tina Turner. Okay. And, and listen, Tree. I'm going to see it because Come I support all black Come movies. Back, Tree. Okay. Real quick, Doug. Mm-hmm. Name me one actor that has dreads down to their shoulder. Well, I mean, the dreads is nothing. They can throw a Lenny dread Kravitz. Lenny, Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz. Okay. That's well, it. Well, Lenny no, Kravitz should have played, <laughs> played oh, Bob Marley. Lenny Kravitz would have had sex with everybody in that damn film. <laughs> I'm sorry. Al- I'm allegedly. Sorry. What? what? What are you talking allegedly. about? Allegedly. Where would that even come from? Well, didn't he have like a, a, a sex addiction back in the day? We don't, no, we don't, I, I've never heard that. Never heard okay, it. all right. My, my bad. Oh, um, Tree, uh, yes. uh, delete that from the scene. No, okay. delete that. Don't worry about no that. No problem. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Um, the, the Marlies couldn't have pulled that 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 roll off. Uh, the kid that played it, I don't even know his name. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up. He did an outstanding job, man. The movie yeah. was really good. I'm giving it four out okay. of five afros. Okay, Sylvester in the chat group says. Uh, Chadwick Boseman wasn't that known when he played James Brown. That's a good Look point. Look at that. That's a good point. Look at point. that. And he played the hell out of James Brown. Hey, man. You saw that movie, right? I did. That Listen, whole man, boy, Chadwick Boseman. There is so much content in theaters, in Netflix, on who. I mean, there's so much content. Samuel Jackson and Denzel Washington can't be every black person, man. They just Listen, can't. I was being kind of facetious when I said that. You know the point I'm trying to make. Kings like Lee. that role seems like it's too big for just a new guy on the scene. Bob Marley was played by Kingsley Ben Adair. Outstanding okay. job. Okay, I'm gonna see it, it like man. I like I said, I'm gonna see it. That I'm brother killed it, man. And, and, I, and, and if you like his music, I highly guarantee you go see it, man. Um, so I asked you what you did this weekend. You saw the movie with the family. Yeah. Um, this past weekend and this past week, they kicked my black ass out of Facebook, man. And I don't know if if you've been on Facebook the day the last couple of days. Tree started a hashtag free Dougie. <laughs> That's awesome. And listen, man, I don't know what I did to these people at Facebook, man. We got forty thousand people in the group. I don't know if forty thousand people actually see everything we post and everything that's posted because of the the, the algorithm thingy or whatever. But we do business on Facebook. We promote Stu's interests on Facebook. I got like 5,000. Don't do that. I got like 5,000 pictures on Facebook, and yeah. it's gone. It's gone. You know the problem, man? Now, we're working on it. We're working on it because clearly it was a mistake, but we're working on it. But as of now, I can't talk to the Stewies, to nobody in the chat group, nothing. They have probably had a, a, a good few days without you, man. But um, the problem <laughs> with this is simply this. You who do you call when you get locked out of Facebook? Who do you call? Hey they got me running around chasing my tail. Like they've got this appeal process that, that I'm trying to do, and I you you never speak to a person. You never ever speak to a person. You're chasing your tail, and this thing is serious. Like they're so big that they don't give a damn about the people. Yeah, right, man. They oh, don't yeah. give a damn that I'm yeah. that that I don't have my Facebook. Like I'm a, a Facebook addict. 
you are one of a few million ninjas they could care less about. Right. Absolutely. And that hurts, man, because because clearly we we've, we've talked about this on this is our second show talking about it now. Clearly, you're addicted too, man. Clearly, you gotta have no. it. No, no, I do. I promote what I do in the daytime. I promote the stews. Um, yeah, I really listen. I'm gonna be honest with you. And I, oh, I told the story. I already told the story about JT. Yes. Did I tell that story? You did. Okay, yeah. So, real for anybody didn't hear it, uh, long time friend in the radio. I knew you was gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, but because a lot of we get I new knew people no watching. What I said, whether I said yes or no. No, you but I didn't. recap the story again, and you should. Go ahead. No, no, but I didn't want to say it as if I didn't say it already. Understood. Okay, so I told the story how um, when we first got shown the door, the great JT the Brick mm-hmm. just befriended us at some point when, in our radio career, and we went to Vegas, and he said, "Hey, man, come and play golf with us." And one of the things he said was, uh, you know, hey, you need to find a way to connect with the people while you're gone, while, you, while you're gone. And I started the group like 50. You know, it's been as long as uh, we started it, uh, like right when the show got canceled. And, Damn. you know, it served its purpose because we still got a connection to the people. But, I, yeah, bottom line is it's a it's a circle. I'm running in a circle and I can't figure out how to get it back on. We actually made some strides. so. It might be on and popping, but it's 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 not going to be an easy thing, man. An easy. Task. Wow, that's wild, man. And and again, I know you're using it for promotion and stuff, but I don't care why you're using it. You're addicted. No, I'm you not. gotta have it. Nah, I've been just fine but, over the last week. I've been just fine. Well, I feel like fine. that. I, I feel like not a, not, not everybody knows about us doing this show because I'm not there to promote it. I understand. You see what I'm saying? I understand. And, and while you're down, I'm gonna do a better job of, of promoting it for you, man. That, yeah. I, I, I need to pick up. I need to pick up my weight. When it comes to making sure that the promotion is being done while you're down. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, promotions is the whole thing. It's the key. Uh, speaking of addictions, man, I do have an addiction when it comes to Southern Edge. I think I really, really, really am in love with our beverage, man. Yeah. Shouts out to the good folks from Southern Edge. You can always check us out at Southern Edge on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Sweet Tea Vodka and the salted caramel flavored whiskey which is my favorite man uh it is a must-have man um springtime's coming it's about to get warm people are about to start putting on sundresses and i'm talking about the females the beautiful females uh they would really enjoy a touch two or three fingers of the sweet tea vodka man straight on ice you ain't got to mix it with nothing else you can enjoy it right there out the bottle shawty yeah so uh, make sure you check out the good folks at southern edge beverage company Hey, listen, by the way, everybody in the in the Facebook group or in the chat room or anybody that watches this video, it's very important that y'all tell people about this. Please. Like, like, like seriously, we we really need your help. <laughs> I mean, because uh we gotta get the word out, man. And people wanna hear the show, but a lot of people just don't know because of you know getting kicked off Facebook and whatnot and promoting the word. One tell time people. One time to the lovely Tina. She just said, Tree does a great job of promotion. I'm in, I'm a senior in high school and people from MoCo remember this. MoCo, I've never said, I've never said that other word again, man. Right. I'm a senior in high school. This is 1987 year. It was cold, I believe. And me and my boy B um, had a party at the Lodge Hall, at the Masonic Hall in our hometown. Dad probably got it for you for twenty five dollars or something like that. Hold on, listen. I'm gonna tell a story, right? So we had this party, and the party was like not just from our hometown or the corner. It was people from the next towns over. So Saint Stephen, Cross people, Macedonia, Macedonia people people packed out the lodge hall. 1987. I come home and I got like two thousand dollars. I had it laid out on the floor. The next morning, Saturday morning, our old man walk in, God bless his soul. Our old man walk in the room. He see all his money on the floor. I look up and I say, look, Dad. <laughs> that cat said, you made all that money from that party last night? I said, yes. Well, I'll be damned. And that cat turned around and walked out. He turned around and walked out, shaking his head. Yeah. I've been doing this a long time, sir. I've been hey, watching man, a long I'm, time. I was in that party, man. Yeah, I was now, in that party, man. Now, now, it taught me a very valuable lesson in my promotion marketing uh, world. You got to have security. Boy, some UG <laughs> came and shot up the party. 
At the end of the night, this is 1987. At the Are end you of sure the night, they were from Hugh G, man? Are you sure they were from Hugh G? I'm 100% it was them ninjas from Hugh G yeah. that almost killed me one night. Well, mm. That's another story. Yep. Well, that's another story. It was 100% yep. the ninjas from Hugh G always coming out of town, trying to take our girls and, 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 and breaking up our parties. The Kane Hoy, part- Hugh G, they knew who they are. There were some party breaker uppers for sure, man. You had girlfriends down in Hugh man? I'm, I'm just curious. No, I ain't know okay. a person from Hugh G. You know the yeah. only person I knew from Hugh G? Big Bob. Big Robert Bob. Porsche. Yeah. Nah, I used to, to so um so my Royal Oats down in Hugh G all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what? Man, I never been. I had a few friends. I had a few friends from Kane Hoy and Hugh G, man. And Mount Pleasant, man. Man, I, yeah, I, I was bigger than just Monk's Corner, man. I used to travel around in that little yeah, range. Yeah, I go to St. Stephen maybe one time a year. Oh, I go man. to Hugh G, never. I go to Cross, hey, never. And, and think about it, I've man. I've never stopped in Cross. Something that the, uh, before we get into All-Star Weekend, man. Or well, Holly Hill or any of the places like that. Um, the reason why I went to those areas and to other schools all the time, man, is because it's easy for the new guy to get some underwear. It's easy. Everybody want to assign the I, I, new guy. I never realized that, and I was doing what? good. I was doing good for myself in Moco, <laughs> in, uh, in Moco, in Moco. I was doing good for well, myself in Moco. Why I, would I, I travel when I got all of this right here? Man, we're gonna get to this All Star game, man. But I did good in Monk's Corner too. But you tend to have a boo in Monk's Corner, man. So if you go to one of the other surrounding schools, when nobody knows your you, business, man, right, you, can, right. you can freely be who you want to be with other folk at the other schools. Yeah, you were much more advanced than me in that. I was good. Man, I had a stunner at every school. I'm not going to call no names, but I, I was winning back in the day. I was really winning. Mm, mm. All right, Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, the two last twos. Um, uh, you are watching, brought to you the, by Southern Edge. The Southern two last Edge two's man. Com. Did you know that the Rising Star game was coming on on Friday, Doug? Did you know that? Um, they've been doing that for a couple of years, but I didn't watch that. And I'm going to tell you about what other what else I didn't really watch either. And just talking about the All Star game. Um, I fell upon the Skills Challenge on Saturday. I fell upon it, man. I mm-hmm. I, I, I I totally forgot because if there's one thing that I do not care about. It's about the All Star Game, man. Mm-hmm. We'll get into it. But- yeah, I mean, we, we can get into it right now. As a matter of fact, I mean, I don't really. And the big thing about the All Star Game, man, is what. And I think this is a, a societal problem, okay? And we were going to talk about hip hop back in the day compared to hip hop now and this video that this young dude dropped on. Man, on are you still talking about that damn video? I, I am. I am. We're going we, we to talk about it at some point. But it ties into the point that I want to make about this, the All-Star game. Like, what's changed in these kids and society and these young people where they don't want to compete? My hand's raised. They don't want to compete. They don't want to battle. They just My- want to. You know, do nothing and take the easy way out and everything. My hands raised, man. Go ahead. What's changed is the fact that five starters in the East, five starters in the West, those 10 players, right? Those Mm -hmm. 10 players that started in that game this past weekend, their salaries total $378 million, man. Those 10 players that started that game if you add up their money, their contract is three hundred and seventy-eight million dollars. That's what's changed. I'm not getting in no dumb contests. I'm not playing my hardest, trying to pull no muscles. I'm not doing nothing on the week I'm supposed to have off if I'm making fifty to sixty million dollars a year. That's hazardous, man. I'm not doing it. Wait. Okay. Looks like. Big brothers. Yeah, you still there, Doug? All right. Well, uh, I'll I'll carry on while we wait for Doug to show back up. Um the dunk contest requires an influx of G League players. <laughs> okay. And and Tree and I are gonna play a video here in a second to, to show and prove that there's still some good dunkers out there, but before we do that. 211 to 186. The game on Sunday, the final score 
was 211 to 186. That's three points away from 400 points scored in an All-Star game. That's ridiculous, man. 168 three-point shots taken. Yeah, it's, 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 it's borderline impossible to watch. Um, and I did watch like the first quarter and a half. What I watched for while I'm watching the All-Star game, and it is the Two Live Stews, as we wait on Doug Stewart to return to the Two Live Stews experience. Um, what I watch when I'm watching the All-Star game on Sunday is who's in the stands. <laughs> I'm not watching them play basketball because they're not playing basketball. They're literally running up and down the court, not fast. They're jogging. They're doing bounce passes off the floor, trying to, tr trying to catch alley-oops instead of throwing them in the air, bouncing it off the floor. They're throwing balls off the backboard. They're not playing any defense. They're li literally giving everybody that's dribbling the ball and coming down the court a free way to the goal. It is totally unwatchable. What I did enjoy about All-Star Weekend and what I was – quite frankly, terrified about during All-Star Weekend is the Steph versus Sabrina three-point contest. I'm not sure if y'all watched that, okay? But Steph on Curry and Sabrina, I can't think of her last name right now. She put, she's a WNBA player, one of the best in, in, in the WNBA. She's one of the best three-point shooters in the WNBA. They had a one-on-one -on -one three-point contest where she went first and she shot from the guy's three-point line. That was one of the most entertaining things that I have seen in a while. The entire time I'm watching her shoot, I mean, I'm not a Steph fan. I'm more of a LeBron guy, as you guys probably take that from the last show we did a couple of days ago. But I was watching Sabrina shoot in the first round, and Lord, oh, Lord, the first bucket or the first rack of, of shots, five shots, she drained all five of them. The second rack, she drained like two or three of them straight off the back. So I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to beat Steph Curry. Y'all listen to me. If Steph Curry would have lost to Sabrina, them folk would have had a field day. Oh, he's y'all's best? Oh, he's the NBA's best? And he got outdone by a female shooting from the three-point line that the men shoot from on the in the NBA? Oh, every shot Steph took, and he started off cold. Every shot he took, I'm literally praying that he hits the buckets. I'm mm -hmm. literally praying that he hits the buckets. Oh, okay, welcome back, Doug. Yeah, I'm back, man. Um, I don't know why y'all can't see my face right now. Okay, I see you now. I was talking about All-Star we Weekend, go. man, and how the best part of it in my eyes was Stephen Curry versus Sabrina in the three-point contest that they had that Saturday. I watch, I watch none of the All-Star game, man. I watch, and this is no lie, I watch five minutes of the game, but the slam dunk contest, all of the little activities before that, I didn't watch none of that, man. It's we're horrible. Gonna get, we're going to get back to the slam dunk contest in a second because I, I, I've got to show you something. There's still hope. But before we get to, to the hope, you didn't watch any of it? Nah, because it's horrible. I don't understand how anybody could watch any of it. So uh, I changed the channel like in five minutes. I tried to watch it, uh, and then I, I saw where it was going with everybody just letting everybody make layups and shoot three-pointers from half court, and I stopped watching. While you were gone, man, I talked about the fact that 168 three-point shots were taken. Mm -hmm. 168, man. And 397 points were scored between the two games, between the two teams, man. Right. Um, there's no fun and excitement in that. However... It's terrible. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm watching the, the dunk contest for the first round, and it's G League players out there, man. Yeah, yeah. Not so the only... NBA during All-Star Weekend can't even fill the roster of dunkers with current NBA players. They have been subjected to going down to the G League to find people to dunk. Well, the McClung kid, the, the white kid that won it last year who won it again this year, he's a G League player. Um, so they had Jalen Brown, Matt McClung, Jamie Jacquez, and Jacob Tobin. I don't know three out of them four guys. Okay. The McClung guy is the once again the white kid that's what five eleven or whatever can jump out of the gym. He he's can, entertaining. He can fly. He can fly. He's entertaining, but what happened to the days when Dominique and Jordan and 
And now Zach Levine won a dunk contest a couple years ago. Aaron Gordon uh, won a dunk contest a couple years ago. But I want to see Anthony Edwards. I want to see Giannis. I want to see uh, quote unquote high flyers in the dunk contest. They don't care anymore. They don't care. It used well, to be a too much money, man. Before you get before you disappeared. I talked about the fact that the two starting fives, East and West, those 10 players, their salaries together combined is $370 million, man. So that's why they're not playing. Right. That's why, that's why they're not putting forth any effort because they don't want to pull a muscle. They don't want to blow their knee out. They don't want to mess their back up, man. Why not? Hold money. on. Stop right there. Stop right there. That's the point that I think everybody is missing. Their contracts are guaranteed. This ain't the NFL. This okay. ain't the NFL where you play in an NFL all, uh, a Pro Bowl game and you right. get hurt. You're going to lose money because you can't play because right. your contracts aren't guaranteed in the NFL. These guys, if they break their legs in 30 places, they are still going to get paid their contracts. But they're not. So that's not be, an excuse. They're not going to be able to play, man. But what's the difference between them breaking their leg in the All-Star game and a regular hey, game? Man, There's as nothing. A, as a former professional athlete, man. You play we football. Love what we, do. we love what we do. We love to we love to play the game. So why did why did Jordan and Isaiah Thomas and Larry Bird and those guys compete the way they did in All Star Game? Well, Michael was the only one making money. <laughs> Michael was a, Michael's contract is, it went from twenty five million to like thirty five million, and then it went up. But the other guys, Isaiah Zeke, they weren't making no money, man. Uh, These Damon, kids are making fifty to sixty million dollars a year, man. I'm not pulling my muscle during my week off. Okay, all right. Now, for those who say every dunk under the sun has been done, for those who say the slam dunk contest is a lost art, uh, it'll never be the same again, I want to show you Exhibit A. Hey, voices, I don't want to understand. My car keys are jingling in my hands. My high heels are clicking towards the door. Oh, my Lord. Shout out to How to Dunk on Instagram, man. They had this best dunk tutorial this past weekend after the Slam Dunk Contest. Man. Yeah, they probably need and to bring them guys in. Did, so There were some, um, some and one guys back in the day when the and one was still around that could, that could really go, that could really hey get man, up there. There were three dunks on that video we just showed from the good folks at How to Dunk on IG, there were three folks that did dunks that was never seen before. At least I never saw them. Mm -hmm. So those are young kids that are still grade school kids, man. Mm -hmm. They're not even in college yet. Speaking of Anthony Edwards, Atlanta Zone, he says it's always fun. Uh, comments after the game, it's always fun. I don't know what they can do to make it more competitive. It's a break. I don't think nobody wants to come out here and compete. What? He shouldn't even say that. First of all, don't let remember what you used to say growing up. Don't let anybody hear you say that again. Well, that's keep that to it, yourself. That's where keeping it real goes wrong. Right. Keep that to yourself. Yeah. Secondly, it's an easy fix to this, and 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 I hate that it even have has to go to this. The easy fix is pay them, pay an incentive, just like they did for this in season tournament. That the LeBron winners was of the, so the winners of the in season tournament all received five hundred thousand dollars right so if this in-season tournament was so big and they wanted to win it which i i find hard to believe um and act the way that lebron and them did then they're gonna have to just do the same thing for the all-star game to make these guys play people don't want to see nobody out there in a glorified layup line it's a bad it's look, horrible man. It's I, almost a bad think look. It's, I almost think it's worse than the than the pro bowl the pro bowl actually said you know what the football and football man these cats they're not going to do this Different story. I understand a little bit more for the Pro Bowl once again for the reasons I just talked about. The money, their money ain't guaranteed. I can understand them being worried about getting hurt. This basketball thing is horrible. It's free lanes, absolutely horrible. Free lanes, bounce, bounce passes for alley oops. Uh, um, they, they shot 168 three pointers, man. As a matter Crazy. of fact, I believe it was the West. The West only made 35% of their threes, and that's all they were doing were taking three pointers, man. It was silly. It's it was a bad look, silly. man. It was but again, um, if you get time, run back that Steph and Sabrina three point contest, man, because Stephen Curry had to hit the last shot to beat her. 
Let, let me he ask you this. He had to hit the last ball to beat the female that plays in the WNBA, and she shot from the men's three-point line. Yeah, but let me ask you a question. Was she playing with the smaller women's basketball? Can we can we check that? Can we verify that? We can definitely verify that. I'm not sure if she was tree, or not. Tree, tree's clutching her pearls like a lot of people don't know that women play with a smaller ball. Yes. A lot of people don't know that. Tree did not yep. know that. She's yeah. given a yeah. A yeah. lot of women, a lot of people don't know that. So, and maybe she wasn't, but I would bet she probably was because she's not used to shooting with a bigger ball. Why well, would they make her shoot with a bigger ball? Hold on. A men's size ball. She shot from the men's three point line. Right. In the WNBA, their three point line is not as far as the men's. She took every mm, shot from the same place okay. that took his shots. Okay. So that's why I'm thinking that they had the same ball, but I could be wrong, but we'll find out. Okay, so when I dropped out, uh, I guess all my chat dropped out too. I can't see anything. Maybe somebody in the chat room can do a quick research and find out if in that contest the women are using women's basketballs compared to men's basketballs. Question for you, man. Uh-huh. What if Steph would have missed that last shot? Yeah, I mean. the money ball yeah, and lost okay. to Sabrina. All of the women's live players and and the supporters in the world would have come out of the woodwork, they right? Rightfully so. They would have killed him. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I was dead set against him doing it because I know how good of a shooter she is. But he did it anyway, and man, he had to hit the last ball to beat her. Here, here's part of the argument on why these guys don't want to play in the game, and they don't want to participate because they'll look bad. And it'll quote unquote hurt their brand. So right. that was the reason why they had given for many, many years when LeBron first got in the league, why he never got into it into the dunk contest because he didn't want to lose. Uh, Tree says that she shot from the NBA three point line, which is roughly 12 to 18 inches farther than the basket than the WNBA line, mm -hmm. depending on the area on the floor, of course, where that is. Um, shouts out to the good folks in ABC in San Francisco for putting that up there for us. Look, man. Um, I was terrified the whole time Steph was shooting, thinking this girl was going to beat him. Right. Uh, it it would have made for great TV, but he would have been devoured, being the quote-unquote best shooter in the history of the NBA, losing to a lady that yeah. plays in the WNBA. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think that no one would say, even if he lost, that she was better than him because – A better was shooter? Yeah, but – A better I, shooter? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. The reason I say that is because Steph got like 14, 13, 14 years, however long he's been in the NBA, worth of tape showing that he's the greatest three-point shooter ever. No, man. He might no. have had a bad night. You can have no, man. a bad night. You can have yeah, one but bad if you night have a, the point. If you but, have a bad night and get bested by someone else, that's enough for the world to hold it over your head. Yeah, okay. I, 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 dude, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I was terrified. Third story, one, third, two, I was dudes. Here talking about the All-Star Game on the Two Last Dudes Experience, man. We appreciate y'all for hanging out. Everybody in the Facebook group, everybody on YouTube, we really, really appreciate y'all. Uh, we've got to address something else when it comes to this All-Star Weekend, man, that you didn't watch any of. One, one, one thing. Um, Tree, uh, um, do we still have the chat? Can we still see the chat messages? Yes. Okay. We can. Okay. Yes, sir. I put them at the bottom. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can't see them for whatever reason. I'll work on it for you. Did you have a problem with Draymond Green and Charles Barkley doing that? Well, you didn't watch it. The commentary that they did, man? Well, once again, I I didn't watch it, but I've seen, like, First Take and other shows in the controversy. I understand the con – it's not really a controversy. I guess the question I would say is that everybody wants to know is, how the hell Draymond Green <laughs> get a job being an analyst for the NBA when the NBA just kicked him out of the league for punching his – uh, or, or get into a fight where he hit a guy across the face and then his well, history with, with it's, punching it's, it's, his teammate. It's too many things to mention that he's yeah. done. He's done He's done three to five things a year for the last five years before they sat his behind down. Yeah. Um, the the uh, big one is punching his teammate. Um, you, pool. you do know why they did what they did, right? Uh, it's money. Um, He has a podcast that I it's think is very it's well. Line, very man. well. Yeah. The, he moves the bottom line. He's a riveting player. He's one of the, the, the NBA's tough men. He's one of the NBA's professional goons. And he can spit, man. He can talk. He's got gallant talent. He's quick with his tongue. He, well, I mean, he, 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 he's got instant comebacks all the time. He's like a bootleg Charles Barkley. And you're right. I think people that are controversial, like, 
Randy Moss got a job in media. Right. Shannon Sharp got a, a, a job in media. Why do you think that – what's the connection with all of those guys? Shannon, yeah, Randy Moss, uh, Draymond Green, Charles Barkley, because they were outspoken when they played. Right. Uh, they got into a lot of controversial things and did a lot of controversial things. And that that stuff sells. Simply controversy that. sells, sir. Controversy yeah. sells. Yeah. Um, I, I despise Draymond though. Well I, um, I, I, I really do. I despise I hate Draymond, and hate is a strong word. I dislike Draymond even more than I dislike Rodman. You right. know why? Because Rodman right. had like a Rodman had like a fun kind of side to every all of the antics that he was doing when he played in the NBA. Even when he kicked somebody in in the in the in the go goes in the in the in the, the the two balls, okay. The testicles, say testicles. It's testicles acceptable. are acceptable. Yes. Even when he did that type of stuff, he was he was like, "This guy's just crazy." He's just uh, shouts out to Big L, man. He said everyone loves watching a fool, and that's the truth, man. Everybody, I mean, there's, I, there's, 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 I mean everyone enjoys the loosey goosey guy, man. You know, you know what? You know what took it over the top for me with Draymond though is this whole thing when he punched Jordan Poole square in the face. One yeah. thing I hate is a bully, man. Yeah, I, I didn't like that at all. I'm, I mean, one thing I hate is a bully. He way bigger than that dude, punched him square in the jaw, stole on him, basically. You know, we remember we had the show where we talked about what's the difference from stealing on somebody and sucker punching somebody. <laughs> right. We have established what's the difference. I think, no, I, think I, I think he stole on him. He stole on, on Jordan Poole. Well, that dude is half his size, wouldn't expect his teammate to punch him in his face, and Draymond go out like that? I didn't like that. Not been uh, a fan ever since. I'm going to question that. Go I don't think he was stealing on them because they were bickering. And if you bickering, Come on, man. possibly, hold on, hold on. Okay. If you're bickering and possibly even cursing someone else, I don't know exactly what was said, but if you're doing that, then you need to be prepared for me to throw my hands. This was a big topic of discussion one day on the show 20 years ago. Right. We were trying to differentiate what's the difference between getting stole on and getting sucker punch. Yeah. And I can't you know remember I mean? the deviation if, between the two. If you're in somebody's personal space or a step away from their personal space and you're in a heated debate slash argument, tippers can fly. And, yes, you could get caught in the face with one. You need to be prepared. I think they're pretty much the same thing now that I think about it. <laughs> if you're standing in somebody's face and y'all yapping, and then he just swing on you, un, you know, somewhat unexpectedly, that's you getting stole on. Well, look, man, hold but on. But at the same time, you could you could kind of say that at the same time, that's a sucker punch as well. I think they're the same thing. You and I's second or third favorite sport is boxing. Right. What does the ref tell the fighters before the fight? Protect yourself at all times. At all times. So I don't care even if I'm between y'all. I don't care if I'm trying to stop y'all. Make sure you are protecting yourself at all times because we in here fighting. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, if I'm in a heated debate with anybody, family member, stranger on the street, and he's within arm shot of me, mm -hmm. I'm going to protect myself and make sure I either keep my distance I'm ready to throw them things, man. Yeah, but if somebody tries to swing on you in that vicinity, what would you call that? Hey, man, would you tell your friend, man, dude stole on me? Or, man, dude sucker punched me. That's all it was. Which one are you saying? Man, a sucker punch is like when someone comes up from behind and, and swings on you. A That's sucker it. punch is when... That's it. That's it. That's it. Sucker punches, you had no idea was coming. You, you didn't see, see it coming. coming. You, 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 He's a sucker for swinging on you when you're not looking. Sucker punch is you arguing with a dude. <laughs> it's crazy. We spent 10 minutes on the definition of a sucker punch. <laughs> sucker punch is you arguing with a dude. A crowd of people has circled them. One of the dudes in the circle reach over and hit you on top of your damn uh, skull. Yeah, man. That's a sucker punch. Yeah, man. Okay. When you're not looking... And These things are important. You. These things are important. And, and, and you're not the sucker for receiving the punch. Said punter is the sucker for throwing it. I, I, I haven't been a fan of Draymond. He probably don't care. But I was done with him after that. Because that was bad. Well, and the reason that, I mean, that was bad. Well, Poo should have been prepared because if you if you let people tell it, he talks more trash than anybody that in the world. So that's Poo, probably Poo, Jordan Poo? Yes. That's probably why, why Draymond just couldn't take it.
No, Draymond did, no, Draymond did that because he knew dude wasn't going to do nothing back. Well, I agree. He would not I, have done that to Shaq. He would not have done that to Ron Artest. Yes. He would not have done that to any player his size or bigger. It's he like, did that because he knew he could. It's like me punching you, man. I'm going to lose if I win, and I'm going to lose if you beat me. I mean, because everyone can look at me and tell that I can just easily kick you behind. A much bigger, a much stronger, better athlete, former pro player. So what why am I fighting little old Doug Stewart that kicks his feet like this when he's sitting in a chair? What do the young people say? Cap. That's a cap. <laughs> that is a cap. I, I, don't, well, I don't care what you say, how, how loud you say it. You ain't going to kick my ass ever. Uh, uh, You've never kicked my ass. Well, th- that's not true. That's not true. That first time you came back from college and I was ready and you were- and you went outside in the front yard, and your boy Bubby was there. That didn't yeah. count. That wouldn't I, I count. It was why it didn't count because it was dark, <laughs> it was and dark. I couldn't see you. So okay? why you go outside if it was dark? And and listen, listen. I tripped. <laughs> it was dark. I tripped. Same thing like in the studio back twenty years ago. Okay. Shag, we we get to tussling in the studio, and Shaggy them. I dump you on your head. Shaggy right. them bring out the camera and start videoing when you turn the tables and you no, jump you from behind. That, oh, I was just about to say, you're a big guy, Ryan. You jump from that. behind, Ryan. There's film on that. There's film, yes. but you jump me. There's film. But Anybody there can tell a story, can tell a story that you jump me after I walked away. Hey, look, man, you came back popping off. You in college. You Whatever. feeling all good. I think you might have already been a cute dog, too. So you really feeling yourself. When you walked outside, let's go outside now. Let's go outside now. When you got up and went outside and Bubba went behind you, I turn around as I'm walking outside, and all five looks at me and says, hey, man, you've been lifting them weights. It's time for you to go kick his ass. <laughs> he did not say that. You just made that up. That's you not. Just that up. Okay. You just made that well, up. Well, you didn't lift your ass kick just like you said. That's Excuse not, the that's French. Not true. That's not true. Excuse uh, the French. Last sports thing I want to talk about before we get to these hyenas in the country. Okay. Um. College football going to 12-team playoffs. I love it. Uh, what's your thoughts? They're going to the five, uh, big five, five conferences. Five plus and seven, then, yep. And then the next five, what do they call those second set of people? They call them the group of five. Right. And then they're going to get two more teams, all right? Yep. I guess yep. allegedly team 11 and 12. Yep. Um, what's your thoughts on going to 12 teams as compared to the last couple of years doing four? They got like it, love more, it, hate it, what? They got eight more chances to get it right. <laughs> the 14 playoff, I never liked that from the start. Yeah, it didn't make any sense because no. you had five power five schools. That's right. That's that, right. That, so that, now, that didn't even make any sense. That's why you to the 5-7 model because you're going to go with every power five out of those power fives, the, the conference champ will be in, and then you've got seven other spots to play with from guys that were worthy of, behind those conference champs to get a shot at the title. I, I, I'm i okay with this because I want to be there and be a fan and watching when a when a 10 seed or a 12 seed wins the national championship. Well, I, I mean, I it, could, it, say, could, it could possibly, it's probably not going to happen ever. I was about to say. But it may happen, and I'm, I'm interested in that. I, I, I would like to see that. It's going to happen maybe two times out of 10, okay, because – that a 10, 11, or 12 winner, seed will win it all? The, the, one of the first four will be the winner every year, man. I mean, you're going to find Boise State being in there. You're going to find a, 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 a Tennessee or a Florida being in there behind Alabama uh, and, and the big dogs in the SEC, the, the Alabama and Georgia. You're going to find a, a, a Colorado messing around with Dion get things straight out there and being in the 10th, 11th, 9th, 8th spot. But those cats aren't going to be able to compete with the big dogs. So you're saying it's not going to happen, you know, ever, where a I'm lower seed is going to win it all. A 20% chance for somebody higher than four to get it, man. Okay. It's always going to come down to them final four. Yeah. And and my, my question to you is this, man. And you're watching the two live stews, Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, brought to you by SouthernEdgeVodka.com. The two live stews experience live in center. Um, that look like the black Pat McAfee. Stanford is now in the SEC. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Stanford is now in the ACC. Stanford is out west, man. Stanford is, I'm, I'm sure you don't know. Stanford is in California, man. Yeah, yeah. I heard. Why have they, you know, the, the Atlantic Coast Conference? Yeah. 
That's all on the East Coast, man. It's, it's all about money now. They don't give a damn about geography. They don't care nothing about that. Florida, North nothing. Carolina, yeah. Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. It, 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 it used to be a pride thing with these conferences and where they were at, located at geography uh, wise. Like ACC were all teams from the South. Okay. The Big 12 were uh, all teams from. Uh, the 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 deep south deep south okay. which is texas and those guys texas oklahoma the right. big 10 was the midwest schools right the pack 12 or whatever pack 10 was out right. west Look, the man. whole geography of teams and you know having having pride in players majorly if you if you're the south carolina gamecocks you got a majority of players from the south the majority Agreed. of players from south carolina well no so I, it was correction. A pride thing. go ahead correction every school the bulk of their recruiting is done in state. Yeah, that's what and I'm that saying. And that only makes sense. Right, right. So it was a pride thing, not only just the state players being from your state, but even, you know, you know, just being from the South in general. I To me it was, I wanted South teams to beat West Coast teams. Or I want part, teams from the South to beat Midwest teams. We grew up in South Carolina. Clemson and South Carolina, the two – big dogs in the state of South Carolina. Right. If they played a school from North Carolina, even though I was more of a South Carolina fan, a USC fan, if they played a team from North Carolina, I wanted them to win because there's more guys from South Carolina on the team of South Carolina. Right. So in that same example, I want North Carolina State to beat Iowa. I want North Carolina State to beat Oklahoma. I want North Carolina to beat University of Southern California. Very good. Very good. There's a pride thing in that. Very all good. of that's gone now. So all listen, of that's man. gone. It's all about money now, and it's blatant. It's about money. It's blatant that that's the case. Not just Stanford in the ACC, oh, man. Gosh. So is Cal. So is Cal. So now you're making these kids fly across the country from the West Coast to the East Coast and the East Coast to the West Coast five to six times a year? No, mom, you got to close that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm talking to my daughter. I'm sorry. She came to the studio. Sweetheart, I love you so much. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, That's going to be kind of detrimental. That's going to be a problem, sir. That's not going to work well. These kids who have school and test and 14 to 15 to 16 hours being taken, 17 hours being taken, now all of a sudden you got me flying from the west to the east Five hours or so for a game? Are they going to go the whole week? Is it going to be a, a thing where they leave early on a Wednesday now so they can be prepared for a Saturday game? And if that's the case, and if that happens, what about school while they're gone? What about their test? What about assignments and projects being done? What about group assignments while you're going on your West Coast trip, which is now going to require you being gone from class three to five days out of your week versus leaving on a Friday after class, spending the night Friday night, getting up playing on Saturday and coming back Saturday after the game. Yeah, I, I, I get the purpose of the realignment. I get the purpose of um, conferences, dropping, conferences dropping teams and selecting other teams. I get the, 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 the choice of schools going for schools they want to be in the same conference. But what I don't get is what this is going to do to the kids or the young men playing the sport, which is something that we talk about all the time, man. Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, two last dudes, the two last dudes experience. Very happy that uh, we're back spending time with y'all, man. If I'm not mistaken, um, our next show, depending on everyone's schedule, should be this Friday, Tree. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. No? Okay. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I want y'all to know something, y'all. I want y'all to know something. I have told them whenever time and health allows, I'm willing to do a show. There's some times where the nerve damage in my neck and my back won't allow me to get out the bed. Okay? It is what it is. Y'all will experience that while we're doing this. There'll be a couple times where if I don't do the show from the bedroom, okay, I'm not going to be able to do the show because I can't tackle steps and stuff with this bad body two or three times throughout the course of the year. But with that being said, I am willing to come on whenever time and health allows to do a show to entertain y'all because I love y'all. Welcome back, Dougie. 
Yeah, man. I, I was I, talking about the the. I apologize. You, we gotta get you a Wi-Fi booster, man. You got two boosters you need. <laughs> the booster seat you sit on over there and the booster that you're going to need for your internet to work better, man. I was about to throw the middle finger at you, but you're my brother, man. Yeah, it's okay, man. Yeah, I, I'm not going to okay. throw you the middle finger. I, um, I, I got I to fix this, man. I don't know what's going on tonight. It's crazy. Well, before you end up going again, and as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, for the record, I'm enjoying when you disappear for a little while, man. I get to talk. And, right. And, and, and I got everybody's attention, and me and Tree had a conversation just now, so... You know, if, if if your internet goes out, man, again, don't worry about it. Just take the rest of the night off, man. I'll take right. this one in. Are, are, you ready this one to, in. are you ready to get into this last story so we can get out of here? Quick question for you first. Okay. What are the kids going to do about traveling when there's tests and stuff at school? Because they're going to have to be going more than one day now. They don't, they don't care. The, but the kids don't in care Cal about... and the kids in Stanford, they're not going to now leave on Fridays to come play Georgia Tech, man. These kids, these these schools don't give a damn about these kids and their they, uh, mm-hmm. academics. That's sad, man. This is it, it's coming out now. That's sad, man. You see what I'm saying? That's sad, it's man. It's coming out now. So this is this is crazy, and this is why. And, and I hate to get back on the high horse. Oh man, the kids are now getting paid to play, and now the school is showing y'all that they don't care if y'all go to class or not. This this is why I'm talking about the relevancy of the two live shoes. Yeah, I'm saying it's two live shoes in third person, okay? We were talking about this 20 years ago. We were, man. We were saying how unfair it is. These schools are making all this money on these kids, yep. and the kids aren't getting anything. Yep. And not only that, we were talking about how the schools really don't care about the kids. Mm-mm. The fact now that you have an ACC historical team traveling all the way to California to play a, a Pac-10 team, so, well, team, it so, shows they don't give a damn nothing about the the uh, the kids. They care about that money. No cap. No cap. No cap on that. Oh, one. no cap. Oh, you have to say no in front of it because you you're not telling a lie. So yes, you go. have to put the no before the cap for it to make sense. Man, we were talking about college athletes getting paid twenty years ago. We were talking about athletic running dual threat quarterbacks playing the NFL and now it's the latest craze. I mean we just we just ahead of our time. We're freaking visionaries. We're visionaries. We're freaking, freaking profits. visionaries. We're profits, profits. man. Negro yeah. Domuses have yeah. you. Yeah. Don't still run still two last dudes, the two last dudes experience. Okay. Gotta man, give a shout out to our cousin man, my cousin back in the crib, your cousin too. Clifford Ellington, we know him as the great Duke. Take it from here, Doug. So this is this is a screenshot <laughs> of a post. <laughs> this is a screenshot of a post from one of our homeboys, a family member of ours, actually. Duke. And it says spotted last night around 11:45 p.m. and 12 a.m. in Goose Creek by Recreational Park on Liberty Hall Road. Now, I used to watch the Wild Kingdom growing up. Shout mm-hmm. out to uh, what was that old white guy's name? Lauren Green. I can't remember his name right now, but but I'm a big fan of animals and their culture and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I believe that's that's a hyena. That's a hyena, sir. Okay. That to to me that appears to be a hyena walking around with a baby <laughs> elephant trunk in his mouth. No, an ape's arm. That's an ape's arm. So you think it's an elephant trunk? Go back to it. You think it's an elephant trunk that the hyena is walking around with? Uh, I think uh, it's an ape's arm. I uh, think it's an ba- ape's arm. A baby elephant trunk, because an elephant's trunk is much bigger than that hyena. But okay. a baby, that's about the size of a baby trunk. Okay, so whether it's an, an, an elephant's trunk, a baby elephant's trunk, or a uh, an ape's arm, it looks like an ape's arm to me. Why are these, these, these wild jungle-type animals hanging around the low country of South Carolina? Um, I've got a real answer for you. And first of all, do you do you even believe that picture? There's been a lot of this going on lately. We'll get to that in a I second. I was just about to say that, sir. Um, in our hometown, like where, where we literally grew up at, Moco. in the small town of Oakley, Moco. which is where okay. we grew up at. Gotcha. Okay, got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Um, they've been seeing some big cats that appear to be mountain lions. No, they were saying black panthers. Mountain lions, and they saw a black panther. No, I believe that they that there's mountain lions in our area where we okay. grew up at. I believe okay. they're mountain lions. Black Panthers, 
Hell no. That's indigenous to Africa. And if you got <laughs> if you got a Black Panther in the low country of South Carolina, you need to have two because they've been seeing them forever, so they had to have made it. All right. Two I find it hard man. to believe there's a male and female Black Panther in the low country of South Carolina. Two things, man. And, and bring, bring that picture back up one more time, Tree, please. Two, two things, man. Uh-huh. We're building so many subdivisions and buildings. Oh, yeah. And going into the woods and into the forest deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper that we're encroaching on the habitat of the animals. I think these animals... Brian, what I'm saying is hyenas are not indigenous to South Carolina. That's an African animal, man. Okay, okay, okay. Or some type of jungle animal. There should be no hyenas running around the low country right. of South Carolina. Okay. That's all I'm saying. There's a safari in Pine Mountain about 30 minutes from where, I'm, where I live right now. Oh, so I, live in Fortson, I live okay. in Fortson, Georgia. And there's a safari in Pine Mountain, I, I, I Georgia. You're, getting at. you're saying that these are escaped animals from the zoo. So you think them animals don't get out of them cages, man? No, man. If a damn Hi hyena okay, get out, they're going to track no, it down. Stop. And no, it. Stop. They can't have hyenas running around okay. public. Doug, stop. We grew up in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Moco, Moco. I'm sorry. We grew up in Moco, Moco, South Carolina. Right. How many times did our cousins, Spencer and Steve Scott, call us and ask us to come help them get the pigs back in the pen? Oh, all the time. How many times did Wendell and Kendall Mahon, the Caucasian brothers that lived up the street from us, how many times did they call us and say, hey, man, the cows got out of the pasture. Yeah, the horses are, got those, out of the pasture. Those are domestic animals that we eat. Come you, can, you can't compare them to hyenas. Hey, man, the deer got out of the pen. Animals escape. But where the hyena going to escape from? Africa? What hyenas? Dogs get out of pens. Cats get out of houses and litter boxes. If you think for one second that animals in the zoo are in different safaris around the country that we live in or the state we live in, if you don't think they get away sometime and get out, you're naive, sir. Nah, but if a hyena get loose, they got to go find it. They got to track it down. The authorities have to track it down. You can't have a hyena walking around the corner, man. That's all I'm saying. They get so, locked up if they call for help. Now, if the well, leopard, leopard gets away. And think about this, man. If you look on Facebook and on Twitter and on, 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 on social media, Instagram, you see several people that have big cats in their yards. You big saw, cats in their homes. Remember, you remember during COVID? Uh, everybody used to watch Netflix specials on co during COVID because we had nothing else to do but stay in the house and fear for our lives. Uh, you remember the tiger guy? What was the tiger guy? What was his? What was the name of, of that guy? What was the name of that series? The guy that's dead now. Uh, I don't think he's dead, but remember he had all these tigers. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he was locked tiger up. Tiger King. The tiger, the, King. Carol the tiger King. Carol was the Carol with the cats and the Tiger King. That's right. right. But yeah, even the Tiger King didn't have animals that got away. Tigers that got away and just roaming around town. And you know what, and man? when Tiger gets loose, the authorities have to get it. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper, man. And you're watching the Two Live Shoes. I used to own part of a tiger. And Dorsey owned part of a Black Panther. There was a, 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 a safe haven, some kind of thing down in Miami, man, where they would get athletes, current athletes, to adopt a tiger. So yeah, man, um, there's big cats all over the place, man. If I was you, if I was you, I wouldn't tell anybody that. <laughs> Seriously. True as, story, as, man. As, as opposed to adopting a, a, a unnourished child in Africa, you spending your hard-earned football money on a tiger that you I did don't not want to see. I did not say I spent any money. You said you died, you adopted a tiger. I, I'm assuming that means that you gave money for food and shelter and stuff like that. So when people adopt a kid, they pay for that kid? Yes. No. When you adopt a kid, you buy groceries. What do you think the kids eat? You got you to gotta feed the kid, yes, but the process does not entail you handing over any monetary currency to hey, get man. said kid, man. Keep that to yourself. Now, listen, it's not like, it's not, <laughs> seriously, don't tell nobody else that you adopted a tiger and all these damn malnourished kids all over the world. 
<laughs> just keep that to yourself. Um, it's not like we are not used to extraterrestrial type animals in the low country of South Carolina. A lot of people that aren't from our state don't know anything about fox squirrels. <laughs> fox squirrels are not your average squirrels. Fox squirrels stand about three feet high and they don't give a damn. No. They are literally littered all over Myrtle Beach. You yep. can go to Myrtle Beach and play golf and leave your cart for half a second. You come back yep. your cart, the That's... damn fox squirrel is in your cart with your bag of chips, eating them, daring you to do something. That's clearly a female fox squirrel right there, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> you looking at fox squirrel private parts? Are you serious, man? Uh... <laughs> And, not, and, and on. not only is that a female fox squirrel, she fat. She fat. You got a camera telephone. We gotta go. We should go. We should go now, man. No, hold on. Uh, last uh, about this last story. Oh, not only, not only that, fox squirrels. Now, there's a lot of sightings. I've seen armadillos. Somehow, armadillos are down south. But this is what I wanted to talk about. The lizard man? Do you remember the lizard man, sir? I do. I do. The lizard man. We even got extraterrestrial type animals. Look up the lizard man. If you're watching this show right now, look up the lizard man. Terrorize the whole country of South Carolina in the late 80s early 90s there's still sightings of this guy and this is an artist rendition dougie of the lizard man there's never been a picture of the lizard man caught on film but this is a artist depiction of dougie. how the lizard man looks dougie look it, up. look it up i believe in bigfoots i believe in sasquatches no, this is, i believe well, in first lizard of all, men first of all bigfoot and sasquatch are actually the same dude no yeah they are no. yeah they no. are I have a question for you. I believe in aliens. I already told you, man. I'm a fan of the Wild Kingdom, sir. So I, I believe watching Bigfoot are the same people. I believe in aliens too. So, for some reason, certain humans think that we are the only people on this earth. What makes us so special to be here? Well, I mean, we're probably the only people on this earth. You mean? All over the all over the, the universe. The You're only saying. beings in the universe, correct? Right, right, right. Yeah. So if I there's agree. other beings in the universe, and we mere humans have traveled to other planets and touched down on other planets, how come other beings from other universes, extraterrestrial type things, don't visit our planet from time to time? Yeah, maybe that's the situation with the lizard man. We'll never know. I mean, I've been waiting since like 1987 for them to capture the lizard man. <laughs> That's the lizard man. <laughs> That's, and that's a that's a fox squirrel. Boy, them sons of bitches right there is tough as hell. Yeah. And the yep. difference between fox squirrels and regular squirrels, not only are they bigger, like way bigger, and they're white and black, and kind of look like a raccoon's cousin, but they they really they live in, in pine trees. Right. We used to hunt them, you know, like, you know, we very rarely saw a fox squirrel when we were young and hunting in the woods and stuff. I've very only rarely. shot one. I've shot one. They are littered in yeah. Myrtle Beach. Yep. They all over the place in Myrtle Beach. All right, so listen, when we go do this again, man, we got to get the hell out of here. I gotta well, while hell. you were going a little while ago, Tree and I talked about it, and I told her I thought we were doing one on Friday, and she was like, no, to the hell no, no. <laughs> so Yeah, we can't do one on Friday. Two Last Dudes Experience, man, powered by the good folks from Southern Edge. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as the great Twitter, which is X now. Southern Edge Beverage Company, man. That's where you can find us. Um, make sure you follow those pages because that's how you're going to be invited to a live podcast, live remotes, and when we interview and talk to guests and do tastings. Make sure you follow Southern okay. Edge Beverage Company on all social media platforms. Okay, so kick, kick into a Kisi's is in the chat room. And he evidently took umbrage to what I just said. And he just said, when I see you, it's on site. <laughs> man, I was playing, man. Akisi about 6'5", about 270. Hey, like, man. he was a men's size. Listen, man. Just, um, just playing, bruh. 
Come I was, on. Listen, uh, I might be able to beat you up, but I'll tell everybody that will listen. I've seen you fight some of the biggest, roughest guys in Monk's, in, in, in Moco, South Carolina. In Moco. Thank you. Yeah, you ain't, you ain't running from nobody, man. You ain't scared of I'm, nobody. I'm, I'm definitely not running from nobody. But listen, you listen. You might only be 5'2", but you 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 fight like you 5'8". Listen, this Moco thing is serious, though, for real. I'm going to need you to get that. Man, I'm going to burn the shirt tonight. I'm going to the fire pit back here. Light me up a cigar, and I'm going to burn the shirt tonight. It's a good shirt. Just put black tape over the word, the name. <laughs> No man, keep wearing that shirt. No man, they used to, they used to burn that on on my people's chest, man. No, nah, yeah. I'm good. T Monk, T Monk. Nah. No, nah, I'm gonna yeah. burn that shirt, man. It's if you don't good. believe me, if you don't believe me, look it up. I believe look you, it man. up. And it's I on Wikipedia. It's interesting. We've been talking about Wikipedia. Wikipedia, for the most part, is true. We appreciate y'all hanging out, man. We appreciate y'all checking out the Jews. More importantly, we appreciate y'all passing the word to let everybody know that yeah. we are back. They're saying that the next show will be this coming Monday. Yeah. I think I'll do a rewind before that so you'll have some content to watch. Do appreciate y'all for hanging out with us, man. Again, powered by the good folks of Southern Edge, man. Go ahead, Doug. Hashtag free Dougie. Oh, my gosh. Hashtag free Dougie. I know y'all miss me in the chat group. You I know y'all miss me in the chat group. You'll definitely be back before Monday, man. You'll okay. definitely be back. I hope so, man. Your page will be back up, man. Yeah. I enjoyed it, man. It was fun. That's what's up. God bless y'all, man. Peace. Peace. Why you always do the balloons?